And so everybody, welcome. My name is Brian Kaskavalsian from G4 Marketing Group. And um, this is one of our monthly trainings. It's a little bit late because I have been on the road nonstop since like the middle of January. And um, actually tomorrow we're taking our first like vacation, if you will, of the year. Um, we um, are leaving tomorrow night. Uh, we leave Atlanta here tonight, um, get home. I've got meetings all day tomorrow, and then we leave tomorrow night um, for about a week. And then we come back and I get back on the road again for a few weeks, but uh, everything is, is, is good. Um, I hope all is good with all of you. You know, the, the what's today? Today's the 28th, I think. What's today? March 28th. So 29:30. There's three days left in the month, um, in the first quarter of the year. I hope everybody is killing it. I hope you're having um, the the year is starting off awesome for everybody. Um, it's it's good for it's good for us. Um, we're up quite a bit over this time last year. Um, I don't know if we're quite going to hit our goal. We're going to be like really really close to our first quarter goal, um, but, but it's been very good and I hope that it has been for all of you as well. Um, I will say this, um, you know, I've been talking a lot about profitability. I've been talking a lot about, and that's kind of going to be if, if my battle cry, if you will, for the next year is going to be profitability, making money, and establishing a good foundation in your business um, for years to come so that when things eventually turn, and, and they always will, we cannot forget history, um, stuff does not, you know, things don't stay this good forever. Now, hopefully it's gonna be like this for, for a few years, um, but we don't know. And we've got to use, we've got to take the opportunity that we all have right now. We've got to take that opportunity that we've all got right now to really establish our businesses and, and put our businesses on solid footing. And solid footing means a couple of things. One is you've got to be profitable. And remember the minimum, minimum net profit is 10% after you've paid yourself. That's a minimum. I have clients that are over 20 or are at about 20%. I was actually talking with Rodney about this last night. And we were talking about how many people are in this business that sell millions and millions and millions of dollars and they don't make enough money. Some of them don't make any money, right? I asked him, you know, about, you know, where are his clients? And he said his clients are 18% plus right so it's very possible in this business to net 20 percent but if you're not at at least 10 that should be your target goal for this year do not accept anything less than that number all right so that's the number one piece the number two piece is the relationship that you create with your customers because your customer and your customer relationships those are the things that are going to keep you thriving thriving when everybody else is going to just barely try to survive right the companies that don't have customer relationships now mind you what customer relationships do is they drive business to you okay customer relations the better those customer relationships are the more people that are out there to drive business to you all right so that's what we're looking for so this presentation all about um lead gen and how to create and attract more of the two highest quality type leads now if i had five leads okay I had five leads and I was to offer you one of those five leads and I've got an internet lead I've got a repeat customer lead I've got a TV lead I've got a referral lead I've got a newspaper lead which one do you want first 
right? And most people, most people are gonna say the repeat customer. In fact, that's the one I want. I want the repeat customer first. They've already given us money, right? They already trust us because obviously they've come back. They know us and hopefully they already like us, okay? What's the second one that we want, right? Do we want the internet one next? I don't. Do we want the TV one next? No, we want the referral next. Why? For some of the same reasons, right? They should close at a higher rate. We should get less price resistance, right? So doesn't it, if, if, if everybody agrees, and, and I go around and when I do these presentations and I'm live and in front of a group and I ask everybody in the group, you know, which one do you want first? Everybody says repeat, and then which one do you want second referral? So if those are the top two leads, doesn't it just make sense to focus at least just a little bit of time, energy, and money to get more of those leads? Absolutely it does. Absolutely it does. Now, when you get more of those leads, right, these are high quality leads. Repeat customer referral, these are the highest quality leads that you can get. Now, the interesting thing too is, not only are they the highest quality, but the more of them you get, the more it drives your lead costs down. Are lead costs going up every year or are they coming down? They're going up, they're going up, right? You're gonna close more sales at prices higher than your competition, why? Right? Why? Because a re we know repeat customer is going to close at what? 50, 60, 70 percent. As opposed to a typical lead, TV, Internet, newspaper, mat, whatever you're doing, that's going to close at what? 25 to 30 percent. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is get more efficient, get more productive with the people that we're seeing. So we'll close more sales. We'll earn more money. Again, the whole point of being in business is so that you make money, so you're profitable, okay? And you want more stability and long-term success. You want stability and long-term success. You don't want to just be in business for, you know, just to take advantage of these three or four years and then give it all back when the economy turns. Too many people do that. You know, they make a whole bunch of money when times are good. And then when times are bad, what happens? Everything they made, they give it back. They put it back into their businesses. Why? Because they didn't set their businesses up the right way. So they give the money back and then some, you know, you got to go into debt. And that's just not the way you want to, you, you just don't want to ride that roller coaster. I don't want you to ride that roller coaster. I've been there. I've done that. All of this stuff is from a hard learned experience, right? So you wanna achieve long-term staying power in this business. You, you wanna build wealth for your family and you certainly don't wanna be a slave to your business. Get more of these leads and these are the things that you can expect. Now look, you could ignore this. You could ignore this. Then you're going to have to deal with these ever increasing lead costs. You're always going to be chasing the next lead. You're going to have to be satisfied with lower close rates. And in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, you're going to have to rely on heavy discounting to get jobs. You have to get better and better at convincing the next prospect that you are the right choice. Right? You're going to continue to struggle to maximize your profitability. You're going to work a whole lot longer and harder than you need to. And, um, you know, you're going to struggle to build a real valuable asset for you and your family. Your business should be an asset for you, your family, for the stakeholders that are in the business. And the thing, too, is you really leave yourself vulnerable and susceptible to the negative changes that are coming to the marketplace. Now, look, don't get me wrong. You guys know me. This is not doom and gloom talk. I am not a doom and gloom guy. I'm all about opportunity, right? This is only about opportunity, right? We have to take advantage now when things are good, you know? 
I ask people and I, you know, I can't see you, so I can't really do this with you. But if we were live, I'd ask you, how many of you were in business in 05 and 06? You know, I was. Doesn't today feel a lot like it did back then? There's money in the streets, you know? There's an, our, we're sponsors downstairs at this event, right next to us is service finance. You know how much money these guys are loaning out right now? I mean, it's nuts. It's nuts. Do you know how many lending companies there are? How many people are buying home improvements? You know, it's things are good right now. And if you can't be successful now, if you can't make money now, when things turn, it's going to be tough. And I, again, I don't want that for you. Now, those of you that don't know me, that are new either to the wealthy contractor or to these trainings, I'm not going to go into my whole long bio, but I'll just tell you this, you know, I've been in the home improvement business since I was 21 years old. I'm actually going to be, God, I hate to admit this, but I'm going to be 50 years old in, God, in less than two weeks, 50. I was like hanging on to the 40, to my 40s for dear life. So I've been at this for almost 30 years in the home improvement business. And in 2009, me and Addie, my business partner, and also my wife, started. we started G4 Marketing Group. And we're really fortunate. Over the last nine years, we work with some of the, you know, some of the, really some of the best people in the home improvement business. Um, and so that's a little bit about who I am. Don't want to bore you with all of that, but I've been where you are, wherever you are in your business, I've been there. Now, a lot of times people think, well, you know, is there an opportunity with my past customers? You know, they, they bought from us already. They're not going to buy anymore. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you some proof right here. You know, we did a, we did a reactivation, what we call a reactivation, a customer re-engagement campaign. And um, this company that we worked with, Window Company, um, they, they, you know, and, and I'm not saying anything that they won't admit themselves, but they didn't do a really great job of keeping in touch with their customers. So we put a program together because they wanted to, you know, re-engage with their customers and, of course, make some sales. Too. So we put together a reactivation program for them. We went back to old customers, old customers that they didn't really pay attention to. And we pulled almost $300,000 out of that list, out of that list. You know, their closing ratio was twice as high as their average. Now, look, had they done a better job of staying in touch with their customers? Now, we're helping them on that going forward. Right. But had they done a better job of keeping in touch with their customers, I really feel that that number would have been significantly higher. There's value in your customer base. In fact, the real value of your business is in the people, your process and your customer list. OK, process and customer list are critical to your success and value of your business. Now, when we talk about referrals and positive word of mouth, look at this interesting stat. 82% of Americans say they seek recommendation from friends and family when considering a purchase. Now think about a major purchase like home improvement. They're talking to their friends. They're talking to their coworkers. Who do you know, right? Because they're looking for some, because all they hear about us are horror stories. Right. And so they're looking at their friends. Well, who do you know? Who did you have a good experience with? Right. And we need to be on the other side of that. We need to do a good job and make sure that when your customers, friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, somebody they run into on the street. Right. When they ask them a question, when that moment of truth comes up what are they going to say about us what are they going to say about you are they going to know who you are are they going to enthusiastically recommend you are they going to know your phone number are they going to make that phone call for their friend yeah so these are the things you got to be thinking about we all have to be thinking about this i mean my business 
my business also relies on referrals. I have some clients that, man, wouldn't know where we'd be without them because they're constantly out there telling other people about us. I love them, right? And so you also have to set your business up that way as well. Now, I talk about Aries Roofing a lot. I love these people. I mean, they are, I, we, we've been working with them since 2010. Wonderful people, great family business. Their customers love them, love them. In 2010, when we met them, when we met them, they were a significantly smaller company, significantly smaller. And in 2010, when everybody else, and those of you, again, those of you in business, remember 2010 was a tough year, a really tough year. In 2010, Aerie made a couple of really important decisions. Number one is we're gonna be different from everybody else. We are going to become completely customer focused. I wanna stand apart completely from my competition. Number two was, while everybody else is lowering their prices just to get jobs, Ari said, we're gonna raise our prices. Risky move. That took some cojones, let's say, okay? But guess what? It worked. It worked last year. Um, I'm not gonna say it here, but their revenue was significant, significant, very profitable, very profitable, and over 60% of their business came from referrals. 60%, we're talking over eight figures, okay? We're talking about an eight figure number, okay? Think about that. Now, the other thing about them, that's amazing, and when you do this right, this is what will happen for you as well. Their customers wait in line to do business with them while knowing they could pay less, probably 20% less, by going with somebody else that sells the exact same product with the exact same manufacturer warranty. They're 20%, 25% more, and there are people waiting in line to do business with them. Why? Why? Trust, confidence, peace of mind, the customer experience. Now, with 60% of your business coming from referrals, coming from referrals, every time I move something, this damn thing goes haywire. Okay. So knowing that, okay, do they create more high quality leads in their business? Yes. <laughs> do they close more jobs as a result of running those leads at prices higher than their competition? Damn right they do. In fact, they have people waiting in line to do business with them. Do they have lower lead costs than the average roofer their size? Yes, absolutely, right? They invest their money. By the way, just as an aside, they invest a lot of money into their customer on the back end. Hint, success leaves clues, people. Success leaves clues. We've got to learn from the people that are already doing it well, okay? And then finally, when the economy turns, will their customer relationships and positive word of mouth help them thrive, thrive, rather than struggle to survive? Um, by the way, I was just told that you guys have not been able to see my screen this whole time. Thank you, Alex, for letting me know that. I thought when I started the broadcast that, um, that, um, hold on, I'm reading a, a couple messages that have come in. Um, so I'm sorry about that. If you were not able to see my screen, I'm sorry about that. 
he didn't miss much. <laughs> but now you'll be able to see the screen. Um, uh, this is from, um, I'm not sure who this is, last name Hicks, Trent Hicks. Relationships are crucial. Having done business with many customers for more than 40 years, their loyalty is huge, all caps, uh, exclamation point, and then he put in parentheses, especially in hard economic times. You are describing the same same person. Thank you. I'm not sure um, if I do know you. I'm sorry. Um, you are describing our world. We accept only one or two of each 10 service requests, telling customers that we have a six week backlog of work year round, knowing that our quotes are 20 percent above our competition and they still wait for us to do their work. Is it time to raise our prices? Maybe. Maybe. Um, Oh no, Aries is a local company. They are not a franchise. Frankie asked, are they a um, are they a local company or are they a franchise? No, they're a local company in the Tampa Bay market. All right. Uh oh, so then they're in your market. Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, yes, they are. You might be losing jobs to them. Um, all right. So those are the two types of leads. I'm just looking at, I'm, I'm, I just I'm, I got the text message saying I wasn't showing my, my screen and I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything else. Okay, so how do you create and attract more repeat customer and referral leads? Well, number one, number one is with referrals and repeat business, you have to earn the right. You have to earn the right. And this comes from a number of places. Number one place being the customer experience. Really, nothing else really matters until and unless you get this right. I mean, you can have a great lead gen system, but if the customer experience falls apart, you know, you're just going to spend more and more money to make more and more leads because you're going to have to fight against the negative reviews that you're getting, the negative word of mouth that you're getting, right? You could be really good at selling, right? Maybe not great at lead gen, but awesome at selling. Same thing. If your customer experience is not a good one, then, you know, then you're working against the grain, okay? Now, here's something really interesting. And I'm seeing more and more of this. By 2020, customer experience will overtake price and product as the key brand differentiator. So what this means is, and think about this for a minute, you know, when, when using Aries again as an example, I don't know how many other people there are in that market that sell the same exact roofing product with the exact same manufacturer's warranty that they do. And yet, they have people waiting in line and they charge more than everybody else. Now, the, the not so sophisticated competitors think, well, it's, a, it's all about price, it's about price. It's not about price, because they're more expensive. It's not about all about the product. It's not all about the product, because the customer can get the product from 20 other people. It's about their experience. It's about the experience that they have with Aries Roofing. That's the difference. And more and more as we go, it's not going to be about price or product. It's going to be about the experience the customer has with you and with your company. Now, part of the reason for this is because the game has changed completely. There's this thing now called reviews online right? Google being number one. Google being number one. People are going online and they're looking to see what other people have to say about you. So I have clients that spend millions of dollars a year on TV advertising, okay? But you could spend all this money on TV advertising. You can get the phone to ring and people, you know, will set appointments with your call center. Well, guess what? Either if they didn't do it before that phone call, they're going to do it after that phone call. They're going to go online and they're going to put in, 
you know, Brian's Window Company reviews, and they want to see what people had to say about you, not just a month ago, not just a year ago. They want to see what people said about you yesterday, yesterday. So you've got to work on this. There has never been a time when customer experience was as critical to your success as it is today, as it is right now. And so you've got to work on this. Now, customer experience is going to drive referrals and word of mouth. It's going to drive repeat business. It's going to drive premium pricing. And it's going to drive more online reviews. We all need online reviews. No one is immune to this. No one's immune to this. Okay. Today, it's about taking an ordinary customer and turning them into a raving fan, a raving fan. Somebody that is going to go out and tell the world, brag about you, tell a story about you, that wants to come back and give you money again. That's what a raving fan is. That's your goal. What do we have to do in our company to create raving fans? That's the question you got to be asking yourself. Now, the way that you do this, and I've done other trainings on just this one piece alone. And if you want more, just send me a note or you know, send Alex an email and let us know and we'll point you to those trainings where we break down the customer experience and how to create an amazing customer experience. By the way, also um, June 6th and 7th in Miami, I'm doing another customer experience workshop. I did one in February, was very successful. I get asked about them all the time. And so um, I, I looked at my calendar and I picked June 6th and 7th to do a customer experience workshop where we actually, we go in and um, we have a max number of, of people, companies that can be in the room, all non-competing, all non-competing companies, and we break down step by step the customer experience and we redesign it for every company in the room. Now, the way that we look at this and the way that you want to look at this is you want to look at every single interaction point a customer or prospect has with your company with your company. So there's the phone call, whether it's an inbound or an outbound call, there's the in-home presentation. Each of these areas, you wanna look at each of these areas and ask yourself a very simple question. At this interaction between my company, my people, and my customer or my prospect, how do I get them to say, wow? How do I get them to say, wow? You wouldn't believe these people. You wouldn't believe how professional they were. You wouldn't believe how clean they were. You wouldn't believe how fill in the blank. Okay. So there's the phone calls. There's the in-home presentation. Installation. Installation. That's a huge opportunity to just wow your customers and show up completely different from everybody else. And then there's post-project. What are you doing after the job? What are you doing after the job? Okay. Think about this. I mean, this is the area that we do all of our work in, and most of all of our work in. And, you know, there's quite a few of our clients on this training today, but we're sending Aries spends more money per customer on the back end than any other client that I have. They spend, listen again to what I'm saying, they spend more money on each customer after the job has been done than any other client that I have by, by 20 or 25%, one of the 20, 25%, okay? They spend their money on the back end because they know that those customers are gonna drive leads to the front end, okay? What's interesting now, I think these numbers, I think these numbers for home improvement are actually lower, but these are just averages for businesses as a whole. But 83% of customers are willing to provide referrals. Again, I believe in home improvement, that number is lower, but let's just go with this, okay? 83% of customers are willing to provide referrals and yet only 29% do, okay? 
again, I think this number is lower. And from my experience with home improvement companies, that number is significantly lower. So why aren't they referring more? Why aren't they referring more? Here are some of the reasons. One is your customer experience was just okay. You know, it's they you satisfied your customer. They're satisfied, quote unquote. Today, a satisfied customer to me is a liability. You've got to design a system that produces raving fans. That's what you need. Now, is everybody going to become a raving fan? No, not everybody. But at least if you have a system in place for creating raving fans, you'll create more of them than you're creating today. You don't give them a good enough reason to refer. Said another way, you don't give them a good story to tell. You don't give them a good story to tell. When we do the experience workshops, we bring Disney in. We do a bunch of stuff with Disney, okay? Because they're better at this than anybody else on the planet and, and probably better than anybody will ever be, okay? But Disney gives you a story to tell. Now, you might say, well, that's a totally different business. That's an amusement park on this. But hey, there's a lot of places. Number one, there's a lot of other amusement parks that aren't anywhere near as good as Disney number one. And number two, there are so many ways that they can mess that experience up. They can completely mess that experience up, right? So don't get, you know, look at companies that are successful at what you want to achieve and model that and bring it into your business, okay? Give them a story to tell. So one of the stories that Walt wanted everybody to tell was you wouldn't believe how clean the place was that was one of the stories he wanted his customers to go home and tell everybody that they knew what's your story what is the story you want your customers to tell okay one of the things i think was really powerful and this is again that using aries as an example is they walk in as trusted advisor, as friend in the business, not just another salesperson, okay? You wanna be your customer's trusted advisor, the one that they trust, because you're there for their best interest, not for yours. A big fail too is you don't ask. So most people, and this goes with the you didn't stay in touch. So you don't ask and then you don't stay in touch. You put those two things together and you're not getting referrals, you know? So the thing is, is that with most companies, referral marketing, if you want to call it that, referral marketing is a three or four day event. It might start a day before the job is completed and it might continue for a day or two after the job is completed, but that's it, you know? And then a lot of people say, well, you know, we ask them, you know, who can you refer us to? And people will say, well, I don't know anybody right now. Well, A, that's not true. But B, if maybe it is true, but it's not going to be true two months from now, six months from now, a year from now, three years from now. You want to be there and you want to continually be reminding them about the story you gave them to tell. You want to continually be reminding them that you are their friend in the business. You want to continually be reminding them about the products that you sell, the solutions you provide, and how the hell to get a hold of you. Because they forget. They forget. And it's not that they're bad people. They're busy. And it's not their job to remember us. It's our job to make sure they don't forget. Okay? So that's your job. That's not their job. Okay? So you've got to stay in touch and always be reminding them about who you are, what you do, and how to get a hold of you. <coughs> Sorry. The other thing is, after the job was completed, most companies just move on to the next one. They don't do anything to make that customer feel special, feel appreciated. That's a big mistake. I mean, think about something. Think about something. 
your average job, if you're a replacement contractor, window siding, roofing, bathrooms, one day baths, if you're a replacement contractor, your job average is somewhere between seven and $12,000. That's a lot of money for most people. Most people, 60, 70% of the people have to finance that job, meaning they got to take on additional debt just to pay for that job. That's a lot of money. And what do you do at the end? Or what do most people do at the end? Sorry, I'm not going to point fingers at you, but what do you do at the end? You do nothing. You don't send them a thank you card. You don't send them a gift. You don't make a big deal out of the fact that they just spent $7,000 with you. Make a big deal out of it. Make them feel special. Make them feel appreciated. Like, hey, you were more to us than just another sale. You were more to us than just another transaction. I already told you, Aries spends more money on the gift after the job has been done than any of my other clients by 20, 25%. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? because they want to make their customer feel special. Does that, when you get a box in the mail, big box in the mail that says thank you all over it, and you open it up and inside it says in big fat letters, you are the most important person in our business and there's a thank you card in there. And there's a, there's a, we do a jar of cookies. I'm not saying use our stuff, I'm saying copy what we do. If you can't afford us or you don't want us to do it for you, fine, do it yourself. Send them something, say thank you, we appreciate you. That's what they do. And it's, and it's not luck that they've got 60%, 60 plus percent of their business from referrals. It's strategy, okay? In home improvement, in home improvement, you're really only gonna differentiate yourself with the customer experience, look. We don't sell these, okay? <laughs> this is not what we sell. We can get, we can get the product from, you know, 20 people, 20 other people. In some markets, even more. The way you're gonna differentiate yourself is with your customer experience. Now, when talking about referrals, you need a referral program. And a referral program is not just a sheet of paper that says we have a referral program. If you send us a referral and they buy, we'll give you this. And then you give them that piece of paper after the job is done. And then what do they do with it? You put it into the job packet. And then what happens to the job packet? Job packet gets put away somewhere and they never see it again. That's why I say it's like a three or four day event. It can't be a three, it's gotta be a three, four, it's gotta be a 10 year event. You gotta stay in front of your customers for as long as you want to be in business. So if you only wanna be in business another year or two, don't stay in touch. That's fine, because you're gonna go away in a year or two, fine. So you don't care if they go away, but if you wanna be in business for more than a year or two, you better stay in front of your customers, right? So create a referral program and don't make it complicated. I hate these complicated programs. You know, I just saw one from a really smart company in the home improvement business the other day. It's like, if you, if you make a referral, if you make a referral, and if that referral buys, and if the job amount is between this and this, you are gonna get 1% of that total job. Bad, that's ugly for a couple of reasons. One, you're making people think, not good. Number two, you're putting too many conditions on the referral. And three, 1%. Now look, their job average in that, that particular company, their job average I think is like $30,000, okay? So 1% of $30,000 is 300 bucks. Okay, so 300 bucks is a pretty good amount of money, but 1% sounds horrible, even though it's $300. Now, no, most people can't do that math, okay? Now, what I say you do 
Real simple, and this is what I recommend for all of our clients. You come up with a reward amount and you make the reward amount based on the appointment. What I mean is if somebody makes a referral and that referral turns into an appointment, not a sale, an appointment, and you run that appointment, you send that person that made the referral whatever the reward is. And my clients do 25, 50, I've got some that do 100. Look at what your lead cost is. Look at what your lead. I'm working with somebody right now. Right now, we have a we have a a thing that we're running for. I'm not going to say, but it's a significant amount. Sorry, I, I probably shouldn't disclose this, but it's a pretty significant amount. Okay, because he knows what his lead cost is, and his lead cost is really really high. Okay. So he wants to get more referrals. So we came up with a really aggressive, but it's on, um, but it's going to be on appointment. Okay. Reward the behavior that you want. Promote your program. I talked about this a minute ago. It's not a three or four day event. You got to continually be promoting your referral program. You got to just keep letting them know, hey, we appreciate referrals. We are a referable company. We love referrals. We love our customers. And then make a big deal out of every referral you get. Whatever happens, whether they buy, they don't buy, it turns into a point. If it doesn't, if somebody made a referral and that person, you couldn't set the appointment, call that person up and say, you know, thank you. We really appreciate the trust. We really appreciate your um, sending up, uh, making that introduction. Now, I just wanted to let you know, we haven't gotten in touch with them yet. We haven't been able to book an appointment with them, but keep them, you know, let them know, hey, we really appreciate you. Okay. Now, this is what our referral program looks like. And this is just for demonstration. But it's got a lot of parts and pieces. We run a contest every quarter. With a new message about the referral. The same message, but the new part of it is hey, now we're going to Pretty cool, right? But it gives us an excuse to show back up again. We send out a letter. After we send the gift, we send out a letter. We call it our fake check letter. All right, so I just heard something's wrong with my microphone. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me now? It's back. Good now. Okay. Sorry, you guys. I'm in a hotel, and so uh, I am uh, at the mercy of hotel Wi-Fi. Um, so let's see what did you guys not hear so i'll just tell you again the contest every quarter we do a contest the reason we're doing a contest is because we hold on you must have been covering the mic no got you back <laughs> sorry you guys start on this frame now yeah, restore Okay, sorry about that, guys. Can't hear you. Lost mic. Okay, um, I've got a bunch of questions here. I'm going to answer the questions. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys could could hear me again. So you want to stay in touch. You want to stay in front of your people, and you want to continually be talking about referrals. And so the way that we do it, one of the ways that we do it, is every quarter we run a contest. Okay, so all of our clients are part of this contest. All of their customers are part of the contest, the national contest. We give something cool away. And the real reason for this is so that we could show up again and we could talk about referrals again. That's why we do it, plain and simple. You know, I'll pull back the curtain, literally pull back the curtain and I'll let you know. That's why we run a contest. It gives us the opportunity to keep talking about referrals. We send a letter out. I don't know if you guys heard me talk about the letter, but a couple of weeks after the gift goes out, 
This letter goes out, we call it our fake check letter. It says, can I send you a check for whatever amount we're giving away? 25, 50, 100, this one's 20 bucks, the example, right? Can I send you a check? We talk about the referral program. You know, in all the newsletters we send out, email, newsletter, or print newsletter, we talk about the referral program. It's branded. We talk about the gift. We make a big deal out of it, okay? Don't take this lightly. Remember, people will forget about you if you let them. If you let them, okay? All right. that aside um okay so here are your action steps and there's a bunch of questions here so i am going to um go through i'm going to wrap up here in just a couple minutes and then i'll go through questions um so action steps design and execute on an amazing customer experience really get focused on the customer experience make it so if you ask Ari about how he does business, and any of you that were at um, Accelerate last month in early February, you heard Ari talking, because I asked him to come as my guest and I put him up on the $100 million roundtable panel. And he, the, the number one word that he used, and maybe only I picked up on this, this just because I know him so well. The number one word that he used when he was answering questions was, we're different. We want to be different. Here's how we're different. He doesn't want to be compared to every other roofer. He doesn't want to become, you know, uh, you know, if you're in the plumbing business or in, you're in the window business or you're, whatever business you're, you don't want to be compared to everybody else. You want to completely stand apart from everybody else. You want to say thank you the right way. People have trusted you to come into their homes. They've trusted you with a lot of money. Say thank you the right way. Make a big deal out of it. Make them feel special and appreciated. Get their feedback. By the way, by the way, if you want more reviews, this is not necessarily about reviews, but if you want more reviews, and all of us need reviews, more five-star reviews, it's all the same stuff, right? It all starts and ends with the customer experience, okay? So get their feedback and, un and so that you know where you stand, okay? Ask for, your refer ask for referrals through your own program and by all means, keep in touch. Stay in touch with your customers. Now I'll show you how we do it for our clients. Again, this is just for, for demonstration, but if, if we get a customer okay, and one of my clients gets a customer, I want to protect that customer. I want to defend that customer against the competition. Okay, So I want to put a fence around these people. And the way that you do that, the way that you do that is through communication, through communication. Now, look, I believe in email. I believe in direct mail. I believe in phone, all of it. OK, you have to use a combination of all of it. One on its own does not work. So I've worked with a lot of clients and converted them from just the phone, just hammering people on the phone, their past customers on the phone three or four, five times a year. Hey, it's time for you to give us more money. Hey, this is Brian from Brian's Window Company. It's time for you to give us more money. What were you thinking about doing? You know, doesn't that's that's not the best way to do it. But boy, if you had layered in some email messages and then some direct mail, and then you called them as part of a strategy, you're gonna get much, much better results. Just like with email. Email, people want to do email because it's cheap. It's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap because it's not effective all by itself. And most people don't know how to do it right. We, we, you don't know how much time we spend on making sure that the email messages that we're sending out are going to get through, meaning people are going to open them. They're going to look at them. We have some of the highest uh, open rates of anybody. Why? Because we're so focused on what do we have to do 
to deliver value to the email inbox, not just keep asking for money over and over again and hammering people with this offer and that offer. No, that doesn't work. And then this, I, I'm, I've been a fan of newsletters for over 20 years. They work. Somebody was saying the other day, what did they say? Something like, um, it's back in style again. Direct mail is back in style again. And he asked me, he said, well, did it ever go out of style for you? And I said, no, I never stopped using direct mail. I've used direct mail since the 90s and I'm never gonna stop, you know? What's great about right now, I mean, it's, you know, the mailboxes are starting to get fuller again, not like it was back in the early 2000s, but there's a lot less competition there. Yeah, you've got to be there. You've got to be there. And we do, and we do it with newsletters, love newsletters. Um, and with our newsletters, you know, we use that also for customer re-engagement and, and customer reactivation. Okay, we make offers, but it's in a nice wrapper, you know? So that stuff works. So look, so in the end here, look, all of this comes down to how are you, what are you gonna focus on? Your, 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 what you focus on is what's going to expand. Your results are gonna follow your focus. So what are you gonna be focused on? You know, if you're only focused on front end lead generation, and you're like everybody else in the home improvement industry that's spending 100% of their dollars on front end lead generation, this is gonna be hard for you. But I say to my clients, just take a little tiny piece of your marketing budget, tiny little piece of your marketing budget. Take 95% of your budget and have at it. Go put it in the TV, go put it in internet, go put it in print, have at it, have fun. Take 5%, 10%. Somewhere in there, depending on the size of your company, five to 10% of your budget and put it into your past customers. There's so much opportunity there if you do it right. You know, I say stop constantly chasing after new customers if you're ignoring and you're neglecting your old ones. Take a little piece of your marketing budget and put it into your past customers. Now, over the years, What's funny is, again, you go to a company like Aries, over the years, you know, they spent their marketing budget on their past customers, and then as their business grew and they had more money for their marketing budget, they start, they did TV, you know, they did uh, direct mail, they did, but guess what? They started to realize, well, wait a minute, we're really getting the most best results, most best, <laughs> their best results, from their from our past customers. Now, this is not necessarily true and the best advice for everybody out there. Okay, everybody, you know, when it comes to budgets and markets and things, things are a little different. But they started to shift more and more of their budget to their past customers. That's why they spend more on on after the sale, right, after job completion, than anybody else. You know that I work with. All right, so right now, you know, I'll go back to where I started. I'll go back to where I started. This, this time right now, you've got some really big opportunities to really set your business up for the future. To really think about, you know, where are we gonna be three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? And it's all about building a really solid foundation, okay? So number one, you've got to be profitable. You've got to be profitable. And number two is if you get customer focused, customer focused, a lot of this stuff that we're talking about are all um, strategies and tactics that come out of your decision to be customer focused, okay? So you make that decision to be, you know, for your customer, to develop a customer for life, to make sure that, hey, we're going to keep these customers for as long as we're going to be in business. That's that's the opportunity you have right now. And look, in all of the time that, that we've been doing this, and most of, most, so our client, about 80% of our clients are replacement contractors, windows, windows roofing, siding, uh, one-day bath. And, and then 20% of our business is plumbers. 
okay? Now with plumbers, this number is a little bit different, but if you're a replacement contractor, you need to be at at least 35% of your business, overall business, coming from your relationships with your customers, whether that referrals or repeat business and referrals combined, that's your minimum number. Anything less than that is gonna put your business at risk. Okay, and if you don't have, and here, I'll, I'm gonna end with this. I'm gonna tell you two things. If you don't have a system set up to be profitable now during these times, I'm sorry, but it's not gonna get any better. It's not gonna get any, it's only gonna get harder. Okay, so you've got to have systems and be focused on being profitable. Number two, you have to have a system for creating customers, relationships, for referrals and repeat business. Because those two things combined, those are the two things. Without them, your business will be at serious risk. Without the profit, you don't have the cash to stay alive. Okay? Without the customers, without the customers, you don't have the leads that will, enough leads that'll be coming in so that you could thrive during any time period, whether it's you know good times or bad times. Um, anyway, so of course I, you know, the whole goal of wealthy contractor and everything that we do at G4 Marketing is all about helping you all be more successful. Okay, well, I don't want you to to struggle. I don't want you to just survive. I want you to be successful in this business. Y you guys work too hard to not make enough money. In fact, Rodney said the same thing yesterday. He said, you know, you guys work too hard to not make a lot of money in this business. So um, with that, if you've got any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Uh, Patrick asked me about Aries, what are they sending? So um, they're sending out our big, what we call our premium thank you box. It's about shoebox size. And inside of that, um, for most of our clients that are on the premium program, there's a branded jar with cookies in it, with chocolate chip cookies in it. In Aries' case, what we're doing is they found these um, tumblers that are um, really and they're Yeti knockoffs. They're not real Yetis, but he still pays, I think, I want to say about 20 bucks for each of those. So we put that in the box. We put cookies in the box. There's a thank you card in the box. There's a gift card back to Aries Roofing in that box. So that's what they are. Um, that's what they're sending out. Um, Frankie said, sorry, uh, sorry for writing in caps. Hey, Frankie, no problem. Um, Frankie is a plumber. Okay, that's good. So you're not competing against Aries. Um, if you're a really good plumber, by the way, and you want to develop some good relationships, you should go to a company like Aries Roofing, introduce yourself, and... Um, and maybe set up a, a relationship where you'll refer each other back and forth. Uh, oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Um, um, Trent Hicks, I hit, you had told me, I think we met in Richmond. Um, and I'm sorry, I hit delete before I read your whole message. Uh, Oh, good. Frankie's, you've got, you've got an appointment scheduled with one of our people. Great, great, great. Uh, awesome. Okay. It would be helpful to know what percent they spend on customers on the back end, even vaguely. The fact that they spend the most doesn't give much of an idea about what we're talking about or planning for. Um, let's say this, um, Phil, uh, uh, Philip. Uh, long time no talk, by the way, uh, Philip. I hope all is great with you. Um, let's just say that it's over a hundred bucks per person is what they're spending on the back end. I hope that helps. Um, so, so look, you all um, that are here, um, 
I am going to let me release a poll for you real quick. Um, I would um, I'd love to offer you a no obligation strategy session to speak with one of our um, consultants. And there's no absolutely zero obligation, but what they'll do is they'll ask you some questions about your business. And um, we use a tool called um, the Wealthy Contractor Opportunity Map. And um, through that, um, we'll understand more about your business and um, look for opportunity in your business for repeat referral reviews and then we'll come back to you with a custom growth plan again you have no obligation to buy anything you can take the growth plan and you can um, just implement what suggestions we've made on your own or some of you will hire us to do it either way is fine with me i just want to again we just want to see you be successful um, if you haven't um, answered the question on the poll, please do so. Um, I'm going to shut it down in just a second here. Come on, the faster you do it, the faster I'm going to shut it down. <laughs> just answer real quick. Yes, please book my uh, strategy session. Uh, not sure, please call me. Maybe send me more information. Uh, no, not at this time. Um, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you say no, not at this time. Um, let me see. I got one more comment. In these cases, do you think a higher price in a lot will ever get a chance? Not convinced all referrals are created equal. Well, no, all referrals aren't created equal, um, Kelly. The um, you know, a referrals close at 40 to 50 percent. So, you know, you're closing, you know, you're not going to close, you know, what, 50 to 60 percent. So some of those people will feel like they need to, to get other estimates. Um, it, being the highest priced company is not only about the price. See, Ari just didn't say, oh, we're just willy nilly going to raise our prices and be more expensive than everybody else. No. Ari said, what do we have to do to add more value to what we do so we can be the premium priced provider? How can we be the premium? This is a good question to ask yourselves. How do we be the premium priced provider? but still remain the best value for our customer. See, what you want to do is you want your value to exceed your cost. My good friend John Anglis says this all the time. When value exceeds cost, people buy. When cost exceeds value, people don't buy. So what can you do to add more value to what you're currently doing? That was the question that Ari came up with. How do we become more valuable to our customer? Okay, I hope that answers the, the question. Lance, you got to give me an update on where you're at with your business. Please send me an, send me an email and let me know um, where you're at. Um, all right, I'm going to close out. Everybody uh, that has not hit the poll, Please hit it, five, four, three, two, one, closed. Thank you. All right, so again, if you're interested, um, things are going amazing, awesome. Send, if you wouldn't mind, Lance, send me an email, just give me a quick update, let me know where you're, where you're at and kind of what you're, what you're doing. Um, Lance was, uh, actually one of our franchisees in the 2000, early 2000s when I had, um, when I created the, uh, the franchise company. And um, he was one of my favorite, not only one of my favorite franchisees, but one of my favorite people. And um, he just started a new company in uh, Washington State. And um, he is an awesome awesome guy if there's anybody else in washington state that uh wants to uh meet another very 
cool entrepreneur, let me know and I'll put you in touch with, uh, with Lance. Um, so there you go. Um, I hope this has been valuable for all of you. And um, until, you know, next month, um, listen to the podcast. I've got some really good episodes coming up. Um, listen to the podcast. Please give us reviews at iTunes if you are listening to the podcast. I would really appreciate it. Um, I would also appreciate it if you are, if this was a good training, if you would go to G4 Marketing and leave us a review at G4 Marketing. Um, I think that's it. Wait, another question? I got a few more minutes before I have to go downstairs and uh, eat lunch with Rodney's group. Um, you're welcome, Kelly. My pleasure. All right. All right, everybody. So uh, those of you that were interested in um, strategy session, um, we will be, um, somebody from my office will reach out to you. You'll meet with uh, either Jamie or Michael. These guys are, you know, trained by us. And uh, this is what the opportunity map looks like. And um, it's a really cool tool. It's fun. And uh, you'll get a lot. You'll get a ton of value just from that, that one meeting. And again, there's no obligation for you to buy anything from us ever. Um, if anybody's interested, um, I'm just going to mention it here. I, I, there's no website up yet. Um, we won't be um, selling tickets, if you will, until um, I think the last week of April. But if anybody's interested in the customer experience workshop that's happening June 6th and 7th in Miami, just um, send Alex an email, alex at g4mg.com, or you can just, you know, reply to one of my emails and just let me know you're interested, and I'll I'll put you on the the pre-launch um, um, pre-launch list. I, I, we've already got I don't know seven or eight people that are on that pre-launch list that want in um, before we open it up to everybody else. Okay. Thank you, everybody, and uh, I will see you in uh, I will see you in April. Bye, everybody. Thanks.